Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Thursday morning to you all. Hope you guys are staying safe out there, especially if you're in Florida. Last night, well, about three or four hours ago, Nicole made landfall as a hurricane, uh, I think just south of Vero Beach, Florida. Uh, so it officially made landfall as a hurricane. Uh, pretty incredible for November standards. And uh, it's pretty wild that we broke, I believe, a 15-year drought um, as far as a, a hurricane drought, which is a good drought. Um, for the eastern side of Florida, it's pretty wild to think about. We haven't had a landfalling hurricane on the eastern side of Florida since Katrina. It was the same Katrina uh, that uh, really slammed New Orleans and, you know, the, uh, the, the the terrible situation that happened with that back in 2005. But it's been, you know, 15 years, and it's pretty wild that we uh, broke that streak in November. Thankfully, it's just a 75-mile-per-hour hurricane. I've seen some videos this morning, and nothing looks too crazy, but of course the sun's coming up, so hopefully you guys are faring well out there. We're going to give you the latest and greatest information. We'll break down region to region. Uh, we'll get much more detail tonight on uh, what the, what it means for basically for the Northeast, because by the time I do the video tonight, uh, there'll be ongoing severe weather. There's going to be a tornado threat across areas of Georgia and the Carolinas today and tomorrow. So uh, we have the ongoing major winter storm. And areas of the Dakotas, we'll give you an update on that, and we'll just try to break this all down for you guys. But um, if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. If you guys got anything that I can pray about, pray over. Certainly put that in the comments. And I want to mention, um, there's been a couple bots in my comments that have been almost impersonating me and commenting on my behalf. So if you see a comment and it doesn't say Mitch West Weather, and it just says anything else it's not me guys so just ignore it I'm trying to delete them if you got time maybe um report them as spam that would be awesome um but i'm sorry about that guys if, if it doesn't say mitch west weather then it's not me so um anyways let's get going so latest update let's see if we got a 7 a.m update and we do it is a 60 mile per hour tropical storm it's right over the heart of the peninsula of florida tropical storm force conditions are being felt across a large portion of Florida. Still forecast to maintain tropical storm status all the way through southern Georgia, where you actually have tropical storm warnings up for several, several counties in south Georgia, including the peninsula of Florida. Uh, but the hurricane warnings have obviously been dropped, and tropical storm warnings go all the way up, I would say 60% up the uh, South Carolina coastline. And then you still got the tropical storm warnings up. This could potentially make a secondary landfall, but if you look at the radar right now, uh, this is the radar out of Melbourne. There's so many radars in Florida. They have great radar coverage. But you see all these little icons right here that looks like a trash can getting blown over. And then this looks like a power line, power pole getting blown over. That is reports of uh, wind damage. So this is the center. I mean, it looks like a tropical system. Very healthy looking uh, tropical storm. And it's right over the peninsula of Florida. This is what is going on right now. Uh, Tampa getting you know hit pretty hard. I would love to hear some reports. I got a guy who comments almost on every single video who lives northeast of Tampa. I'd love to hear what you're uh, seeing out there this morning, but it looks like you guys are certainly getting some gusty winds. Uh, this certainly isn't nothing that you guys can't handle. This is crossing the same path, but just from a different, uh, different direction uh, that Ian took. Ian obviously went over this way. And then Nicole was going this way. So you guys have been kind of double doozy this uh, hurricane season. Uh, but Orlando getting hit hard. I mentioned that all over the last several videos that I thought you guys would get hit pretty good by the northern the northern kind of eye wall or just wall of this center. And it uh, looks like some reports of wind damage. But this will continue to lose some steam. We will see if the center of Nicole will try to kind of sneak back over the... Northeast Gulf of Mexico before making another landfall. Um, maybe it just kind of grinds it out this way, but we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't think it's it's not going to matter too much on strength. It's just not going to be over the Gulf of Mexico long enough to re-intensify. But we'll watch it, but that's what she looks like right now as of around 7 a.m. Eastern Time. And uh, we'll continue to watch this. But you, these are the feeder bands that we begin to worry about a little bit later today that will cause um, a tornado threat across these areas of Georgia and the Carolinas a little bit later today. Uh, these feeder bands will eventually 
uh, kind of work their way into these areas right into here. Um, but we'll continue to watch that, and, and, and you know that'll definitely become a story a little bit later this morning. But watches and warnings, uh, all these little tan shaded areas, these are wind advisories. So you got the wind advisories, then you got the high wind warnings in this yellowish color right here, and then just all out tropical storm warnings up for all the dark red areas. You know, basically all of South Georgia under a tropical storm warning, uh, Tallahassee under a tropical storm warning. It looks like uh, so. As this turns, the the stronger quadrant of the storm is just going to kind of go over right over these areas. So we got to watch to see what kind of unfolds today. Storm Prediction Center, slight risk for this entire area from Jacksonville, uh, Florida, all the way up to Wilmington, North Carolina. There is going to be a severe weather threat tomorrow, too. And this is really just driven off purely the tornado threat. This will be the biggest threat and really the... Uh, the, really the only threat we really need to monitor. We'll have some gusty winds in some of these storms, but there's a 5% risk of a tornado in 25 miles in even given location. And it's something we need to watch out, not just for today, but overnight tonight too, which as the sun goes down, you know, it's always kind of scary when you have a tornado threat. There's a little bit of a tornado threat for a line of storms that will be working its way ahead of a powerful cold front uh, that is actually helping to provide a major winter storm across northern Minnesota and the Dakotas. We'll watch that. But let's take a look at the AAAR model and how this can unfold today. I think it's a healthy thing to look at here. And it really just kind of gives us a great view on how this can unfold. Center of the storm will continue to work over Florida. But at the same time, as you can tell, up here in South Carolina, Georgia, Augusta, Georgia, Savannah, you see these feeder bands? As we've worked over the last few days, Nicole has trended more west as far as working more inland. Therefore, the dirty side uh, gets exposed over land as, in, instead of just being offshore. So these little feeder bands will work into South Carolina, into Georgia. And with these, you're going to have rotating updrafts and the potential for quick dropping tornadoes. You're not going to have long-lived tornadoes in these situations most of the time. Um, but they could certainly be an issue. So we're around 6 p.m. Eastern time. Sun's beginning to set. Feeder bands are working its way inland um, from, from offshore. Watch out Buford a little bit later tonight around dinner time. Then we need to watch out Charleston. And these bands will continue to wrap themselves in. At the same time, you know, I'm not meaning to ignore you guys in the panhandle of Florida. You guys will see likely see a lot of heavy rain today. As this potentially makes a secondary landfall, a lot of gusty winds into the Panhandle of Florida today. A lot of heavy rain and just tropical storm force conditions for a period of time for South Georgia, especially as we get into this evening. And then, like I said, this will begin to turn. We watch these feeder bands even in, overnight into tomorrow morning. And then we got to figure out how tomorrow is going to unfold as far as a severe weather threat. But some of these storms right here into Virginia and North Carolina, this could end up being a little bit of a, a risk of tornadoes for sure. And then the center of the storm moves through, brings a lot of rain uh, to the um, southern apps and certainly something we need to watch out for. As far as wind speeds today, this is potential wind speeds uh, miles per hour wise. Uh, you know, we'll continue to deal with 40, 50 mile per hour wind gusts across the northern peninsula of Florida. This will work into the panhandle of Florida probably tonight and then south Georgia, uh, panhandle of Florida, 40, maybe as much as 50 mile per hour wind gusts. It's likely going to cause a little bit of some power outages in these areas. We work our way a little bit further um, north, let's see, into the north and South Carolina. And then we're working our way into late this evening, into overnight. There's going to probably be a period of gusty winds that moves through Georgia, South Carolina, maybe 30, 40 mile per hour wind gusts. These are gusts not sustained as the center of Nicole gets very close. And uh, we're getting into tomorrow at this point. And then there might just be a core of some gusty winds uh, that really moves moves through tomorrow night, Friday night, into the eastern Virginia area and eastern um, North Carolina. So uh, the Northeast today, definitely make some preparations if you're in the Northeast. Have everything tied down because as we're getting into tomorrow morning, you notice all the moisture starting to work its way north. Uh, but today will be pretty quiet, so use today to just make preparations. You guys know all about strong winds in the northeast. 
this is kind of be, kind of just be like a nor'eastern, but it's the origins are going to stem from a tropical system. So you guys know all about it. Stay safe out there and have everything tied down. Make sure your uh, garbage can ain't, ain't halfway down the neighborhood. Uh, the South Central U.S. cold front is going to work its way through. This could spark some. There might be enough lift, just enough lift for some showers, maybe a storm from anywhere from central Oklahoma through southeast Kansas, northern Missouri, and then some of these storms up into Iowa could certainly be severe. And then as we get into the late evening hours, overnight hours, some of these could be get kind of quite intense in these areas in Oklahoma. But I'm not expecting a big severe weather episode here. Uh, but same kind of areas. Uh, you know, watch out Kansas City. Certainly could get some heavier rains overnight as this front gets close. But uh, this is likely going to lack severe elements due to the fact that there's a lot of dry air and cold air pushing behind it. In fact, if you look right here, you can actually see some winter uh, precipitation on the back side of this little line of uh, moisture right here. So it's going to be some cold air chasing moisture in this situation. Now, the north central U.S., a very active day today. Snow's already ongoing. It's falling across the Dakotas. There's ice storm warnings up, and uh, if you're not on the snowy side, you could be on the sleet and freezing rain side, and uh, this will continue to work through. On the warmer side, on basically the eastern to southeast side of this low, uh, some, some warm, moist air is being pulled up into this. Therefore, you could have a tornado threat with some of these storms in, in eastern Iowa, uh, southern sections of um, Wisconsin a little bit later today before a cold front comes through and dramatically drops the temperatures but at the same time, on the north to uh, northwest, the western side of the storm where it's cold air, you got a doozy of a winter storm hitting these areas. A lot of ice with this too, but look at this. Showers, this is the overnight hours tonight, but showers ahead and then a mixture of winter precipitation on the back side of this moisture could work through. So you could have a tornado through across Iowa, but by the time you get into later tonight, Maybe some sleet, maybe a little freezing rain on the backside, maybe some flurries. So it's just getting to that time of the year where the weather gets much more dynamic with the changing of the seasons and things like that. But snowfall between now and the duration of this snowfall event, um, an additional foot to maybe foot and a half of snow could fall from the Nas this is the National Weather Service, North Dakota, into especially northwest sections of Minnesota. A lot of snow could fall, guys. And not only that, freezing rain. Uh, some areas, once you start to get over a quarter inch of freezing rain, that starts to cause uh, tree limbs to really sag and potentially snap. And uh, a lot of freezing rain can add up in these areas. And basically the far northeast areas of South Dakota and far southeast corner of South Dakota. And then these areas right here, got to watch for a little bit of a glaze. Um, a solid glaze of freezing rain is certainly possible. Temperatures today are going to be wild. There's going to be a moving cold front. Therefore... You might start off in certain sections of Kansas, Missouri. You might start off today, it might rise all the way up into the 60s and 70s. And then this cold front will move through sometime this afternoon, this evening. Dramatic drop will occur. So it's going to be a tough day to figure out the high temperature today in this area just due to this moving cold front. But bitterly cold temperatures for the Dakotas. I mean, bitterly cold. Um, and then, you know, all this snowpack is just going to be rock solid by the time this cold air moves through uh, but very warm air surging all the way up into areas of the peninsula um the up of michigan um with 70s the entire state of michigan just about 60s and 70s for a large portion of wisconsin unless you're north of this boundary where it's much colder and then 70s maybe even the 80 degree reading ahead of this cold front in iowa and illinois and then just 60s and 70s everywhere else even a warm day in the northeast 50s, 60s, 70s, well above average temperatures ahead of this cold front, guys. But that's all I got. Stay tuned tonight. We're going to begin to break down a massive pattern change to cold air. And, guys, I am really seeing some potential shots at winter weather for even areas further south. I'm not talking about the southeast like Alabama through the Carolinas or Georgia. But it's close. It's close. I'll, I'll, I'll add that. But we'll talk about that. That will begin to come become a much bigger topic over the next 24 to 48 hours. And uh, I really think we're going to have a favorable pattern for someone to see an early season winter event. So uh, we'll talk about that tonight, but we'll really begin to discuss that probably tomorrow into the weekend. But God bless all y'all. Stay safe out there. 
and I'll give you updated tonight.